Welcome to Buckets, brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. My name is Matt Moore. I'm the senior NBA writer for the Action Network. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate you guys joining the show. Uh, on today's show, we're going to break down the Eastern Conference Finals Game 2 between the Miami Heat and the Boston Celtics. We'll give you best bets. We've got sides. We've got totals. We've got props. we got uh, all sorts of stuff in here to play as uh, going to be a little bit of victory lap after we completely fucking nailed Game 1. Swept the board here on buckets. Very happy with our results from game one. Um, you can find all of those picks if you want to double check it in the Action Network app. Best way for you to track your picks. You get a second information where the bets and money are coming in. Uh, our daily show, Green Dot Daily, is in there. All of our podcasts. Make sure WNBA starts tomorrow. Check out our WNBA episodes, getting you ready for the season. If you are just like, yeah, but I don't really care about the WNBA. If you listen to this, you're better. If you're a better, you care about, about cash and bets. If you care about cash and bets, you want to bet WNBA. It's a soft market. Get in. Get in now. This is going to like, we're going to see this, this market get sharper this season. Like I'm telling you right now, there's enough coverage of the WNBA now. This market's going to get sharper. Get in now. Get prepped. It's an opportunity. Don't miss it. Uh, speaking of an opportunity, if you would like some merch from the Action Network or if you want a one-year pro subscription, you might be able to land one just by leaving a five-star review on Apple. Just go to Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star review. Tell us why you love the show and who your favorite analyst is, whether it's Sean Little at Chicago Flow, Jay Money at Jay Money is Money, Wheaton Brando, Brandon Anderson, king of the bet, lean, pass, fade, other things that he does, Jim Turvey, Joe Delera, Jill Gallant, Maria Marino, all sorts of folks here on Buckets. Tell us who's your favorite and why and you might be able to win a one-year pro subscription or merch from the action network store just a heads up the polos are awesome as well as the pull the zip ups i got a quarter zip that is awesome yes that's right i wear quarter zips i'm not gonna i'm not gonna <laughs> i'm not gonna deny it that's that's who i am um i'm wearing a hat on today's show because i sunburned myself so badly that my head's feeling so i have to wear a hat today that's also to who not, you are as to not repulse <laughs> The peoples. You can check out the show, by the way, on YouTube uh, and in the Action Network app as a video podcast. Joining me today to break down game two of Celtics versus Heat. We got Sean Little from MSG Networks at Chicago Flow. We got Jay Money. You can find him on Twitter and on YouTube. Jay Money is Money. Check out the YouTube show from Jay as well on the daily. Brandon Anderson, NBA Futures Analyst. You can check him out on Twitter at Wheaton Brando, W H E A T O N B R A N D O. I'm at HB Basketball. Let's get going. As always, we'll go around the horn. We'll give our picks, and then we'll do the caps on them. Jay, let's start with you, my man. What's your best bet for Celtics versus Heat game two? Uh, to give the lines real quick, Celtics are now nine-point favorites because the books are like, fuck you on the on the, on the, the bounce-back spot. Minus nine after being minus eight in game one after the loss. Total 215 and a half. Bumped five points. From the over that sailed in game one at 210 and a half. Jay, what are your best bets for game one or game two? Yeah, give me Celtics in the first half, minus five and a half. I do think it could be a trifecta spot for the Celtics here. Short and sweet. Sean, Sean Little, what do you got? Boston Celtics minus nine, team total. I'm going to go back to the well, over 112 and a half over at FanDuel. It's going to be a contentious show today, I can tell. Brandon Anderson, <laughs> your best bets for game two. I'm taking them what they just took. Give me the Celtics on the first half and the full game. Minus five and a half first half, minus nine full game. And then back to the well with two more you've never heard of before. Give me Jalen Brown vase hand over two and a half turnovers. And give me Al Horford to lead the series in a rebounding. We had that one on our series prop preview. 80 to one. We'll get into it. Uh... I'm going to go, I'm going to fade all of you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm definitely taking it. I already got Celtics <laughs> minus nine I immediately when it came out. Uh, Celtics minus nine. I'm also taking the under here, 215 and a half. Um, this is what's referred to as getting too fucking cute, but I'm going to do it anyway because I got a lot, lots of trends that suggest a reason for doing so. Uh, Jay, let's start with you. Okay. Look, I, I have a little bit of a hard time with this series, um, not capping it. I'm just kind of like, yeah, no, the Heat are going to win game one. Like, I felt very confident in Heat game one. I was like, they're going to win this. Like, they're Celtics coming off of game seven. Got the game seven trend. Check. The Celtics always fuck around in, in spots where they should be feeling good. Check. The Heat always sneak up on teams. Check. Like, it just seemed really easy. This series, to me, feels very boilerplate. Maybe there will be plot twists that catch me off guard. 
But as of right now, like I'm not, I'm not surprised that so many of us like the Heat in Game One. I'm not surprised that all of us are on Celtics uh, in Game Two. For you specifically, you don't tend to play like you're not at like you're you're not your your cap is usually about teams and where they're at and betting those spots. Why do you like this spot so much for Boston, uh, especially when we know that these lines are over adjusted for that bounce back? Well, we've seen this each time. The Heat go and win game one. In the game two, they go out there and get smacked. I know versus the Knicks, um, they did cover the first half in this spot, but I see this going like the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, I see an absolute slaughter in this one. Uh, couldn't talk to y'all first quarter, first half, and full game, all three of them. I do think this will be a Celtics type of game. Um, you have to, I mean, if they can go out there and cover and win the first half by 10 points, even when they're coming out there lacking school and kind of just playing around and not playing great defense i definitely expect them to come out and cover the first half when they are locked in on defense right so we know that they uh the heat have the coaching advantage but like marcus smart said this is all about the players right here you can't be messing around you can't come in like the game is easy they let their foot off the gas the heat do what they do play their same game uh and end up beating them straight up man so i do expect the celtics to come back with some defensive uh intensity in this one i think the heat might get held to 90 points in this game i see them getting into foul trouble early uh, as well so give me the Celtics here in the first half if they could do it in game one I definitely expect them to do it in game two this season after teams lose game one seven and oh straight up six and one ATS the only team to not cover in game two was the fraudulent ass should have been home in the first round New York Knickerbockers that's the only team that did not cover but that was versus the same heat team so something to watch out for there um Sean give me the cap that you have and on Celtics. And then I want to talk about the number. Yeah, no doubt. J money is money's dead on. This is deja vu fellas through and through he'd have come out and won each game in the playoffs, each series. They beat uh, Milwaukee in game one. They beat the Knicks in game one. They beat the Celtics in game one. And then they lost game two in both of those. They gave up one thirty eight and lost by 16 to the bucks in that game too. Then they lost to the Knicks by six. Now that was with was without Jimmy Butler and that was when those role players were playing out of their mind. They were they were knocking down shots. Caleb Martin, Gabe Vincent had really good games in that spot. They almost were able to pull it out without Jimmy, but they did lose. You can go back to last year's Eastern Conference Finals. They won game one, lost game two by 25 to this very Boston Celtics team. Let's talk about the home teams in this spot, Matt. You alluded to it as well. 11-1 and one ATS in game two this year. Over the last three postseasons, home teams – a 35-7 against the spread in game two. 16-2 and two against the spread when trailing the series 1-0. This is a massive bounce back spot. I'm actually disgusted about this because like you said, Matt, oh, you guys, we know everyone on the, in the world is going to want to take the Boston Celtics. And honestly, as the fourth quarter was winding down, I was trying to think of a number that they could put out where I would, like, I wouldn't take the Celtics. And honestly, I was like in the 12 12 range, which is insane, but it's it's like this is this has been the script all year. Now, for whatever reason, like we've talked about it, Boston Celtics are just overall, I don't want to call them a disgusting team, but they just lollygag and do things. Like if Spolstra had this roster, who fucking knows what, what this team would look like? We'd be talking about this might be the best team we've ever seen. Like that's the type of, that's how Spolstra would have this squad in it whipped up and in shape and ready to go. Dude, we're talking. I, I just have to rant here for a second, fellas. We're talking about Cody Zeller playing minutes and making an impact. We're talking about guys that uh, it's just mind boggling stuff. What they do game in game out. They they've already come to Boston and taken care of business. And typically what they've done all playoffs is no, game two is, is the game where, where they come off the, Come off the come off the gas. So I'm gonna take Boston minus nine. I'm gonna take Boston uh team total over 112 and a half. I think if they cover nine, which I believe they will, they'll they'll score 115, 116 in the game overall. Game two, this is the spot where Boston, I guess, need needed to be woken up again, coming off of what they've been doing game in, game out, what happened in Philadelphia. They're gonna come home. This is a big W for them, double digit spot. I like Boston here. Game three is a completely different story, but game two, Boston Celtics get it done. Ryan and I are like already like planning of what we're going to do with our heat plus two and a half series spread minus 130. <laughs> like 
they really hung that line. Like I feel, I feel, I feel bad for odds makers, honestly, that the Celtics demanded like the numbers for, for Boston, the regular season demanded that they make their, these power ratings as high as they did, which like, and then like the Celtics had such an awesome run the first three months of the season and everybody bought in, like, is this a juggernaut? And so they took all this liability and that adds on to the equation. So like you have an extremely good power rated team juiced by liability which is why we're getting these numbers. Like it's just been, it hasn't, here's the thing. This is what's great about Boston. It hasn't been profitable to just fade them blindly. You can just see the spots coming a mile fucking away. Like it's just very obvious what they're going to do. Um, I do have some numbers because I want to talk about, about the number before we go to Brandon. Um, so a- as a warning sign, since the bubble, okay, Miami after a win, in the playoffs 20 and 16 straight up 22 and 14 against the spread that 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 seems good uh on the road after a win 10 and 9 straight up 12 and 7 ats since the bubble um game twos after a win on the road since the bubble three and two straight up four and one against the spread for miami so like miami has been a team that if we look back at this team since the bubble when they do take game one and they do are coming off of a win, they have been more resistant to the spread than a lot of teams. And like, that's the the real concern with this is like, we're, we're right back in that, in that Sixer series where it was like, this number's dumb. Like this number's just dumb. This should not be nine. We all know this should not be nine. We know that the difference between these two teams in Boston should not be nine points. However, the reason if you're like, well, then why are you betting this? The reason is because, for me, it's like, all right, let's look at range of outcomes. In this game in particular, a healthy range of outcomes out of however many, like we could, I could guesstimate the number. I don't have an exact. A healthy range of outcomes has to be like 10 to 15. 10 to 15 points. A healthy range of outcomes have to be has to be 15 plus. Like there are a, a number of scenarios where Miami just absolutely gets blown out in this game. Took the split, no big deal. Let's go home, focus on the home games and go from there. Uh, the other side of this coin, as far as the heat coming off of a win is Boston after a loss, the last two seasons, which I kind of like want to demarcate post Brad Stevens, you know, with this core, et cetera, last two seasons after a loss in the playoffs, 11 and three straight up 11 and three against the spread. So a lot, a lot of, a lot of reason to go ahead and believe in them in this spot. Uh, Sean, I will warn you coming off of a loss, they have gone over their team total in four of the 11. I think this is a fine spot. You're getting a pretty low number still relative to it. And there's a very good chance that they just like, they bomb threes um, and they win this game with all, like they blow out Miami and they keep pouring it on. I also think there's a good chance that this is, there's garbage time in this and like the Celtics go over and win by margin and it's like, you know, Peyton Pritchard and I guess Grant Williams is no longer in the rotation bombing threes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, Brandon, I know you're going to kind of like just concur with the previous thoughts. What do you have to add on Celtics? And then we can get into your other bets. Yeah. Like you said, mostly concur. We talked about the, in the spot, the game two home team down. Oh, one in the series, six and one ATS. So the heat are the one team that covered, but they covered by one. And if I remember right, I believe that was one of those garbage covers also where we're like, oh, come on, like shoot a free throw foul at the end. Like, I think it was one of those. So I'm going to make too much of that. I do feel a little better about the first half than the cover just because this is starting to feel like the mush spot a little bit. Like, I think everyone's going to be getting in on the game too, but they already bumped it to minus nine. So I think they're trying to get us there. Uh Here's the seven margins for this spot so far the postseason. We had that one six-point win. Otherwise, all the rest are by double digits, including a 14, 16, 17-point win, 27, and 34. So I'm not sure where I'm going to do it yet, but, man, you talked about a range of outcomes, 10 to 15. Here's what I got in my notes at our sponsor, FanDuel. 16-point win, plus 210. It's not tempting enough to me. That's Two, two to one instead of just playing the regular line. I don't really need that margin. If I'm going to do an alt, I'm going to go higher. So 25 or more is plus 725. 30 plus win is 20 to one. Look, we've had two of those 27 and 34 point wins. And this is extremely a Boston team that could win by that much and extremely a Miami team that could lose by that much. So I don't follow you for doing that. 
I like the first half play a little better than the full game if you only want to do one. Uh, first half was an angle we talked about on the series preview, Matt, as this is a spot if you like Boston, get the first half line, you get a little bit shorter value there, a shorter line. Celtics first half in the season, plus 9.2 net rating, number one in the NBA, plus 10.5 in the playoffs, so they're up even higher there. Of course, they led by nine in game one, even though they lost the game. Miami has a negative first half net rating for the playoffs. In the, even though they're in the conference finals, this is the team that has taken those punches early and then just been like, oh, you, you think you got us? Well, sorry, we're still here and, and done their thing. So, yeah, I think that's mostly it. First half, by the way, those seven games, the 0-1 uh, road spot, the team that is down at home is 5-1-1 one, and one straight up in the first half average winning margin by 11 points in the first half this postseason. So we've got uh, 11, 15, 20, and 26-point halftime leads in those games. I will be playing the Celtics first half. I'll be playing the Celtics uh, full game. And I'll probably be watching WNBA in the second half because I don't think we're going to have to watch this one too closely <laughs> as the Celtics roll. Um, hey, really really quick, Matt. Let me, let me ask because... And, and I want everybody's input on this because I think this is maybe interesting. Is there any way, because I think we're all in agreement that Boston messes around and we know what, you know, a dialed in every game, every possession Miami Heat team is. Jay, is this, is, is, is there ever a spot where it's like Boston was busting these boys ass outside of the third quarter and we're overreacting a little bit. They were six of nine from three in the third, 17 of 26 from the floor. And then on the flip, Boston was nine of 20 from the third. They that, that may have been the best third quarter the Miami Heat have ever played in franchise history. Is there a spot where it's like, man, we're overreacting here a little bit. They had a ridiculous third and Boston could really f roll these boys out the rest of the way. Not that I believe that, but that that's another angle where I, I part of me feels like maybe we're overreacting a little bit because it was a 12 minute window where they did get they, they did get their doors blown off, but Miami went crazy and shot it out of this world. I think it's personally, I think that it's all on coaching. Basically, uh, Spolcher knows how to rally his team up. He knows how to make the sorry second half adjustments as well. Whereas Missoula, he's kind of like all on the players. He's just depending on the players. He's not. I don't take him as a motivating coach. Uh, that's kind of why I like the first half more. I do think they covered a full game, but um, like I say, second half adjustments can really be big um, in this spot, which I still think the Celtics blow him out. But um, obviously the third quarter, I mean, it may not be anomaly there. We know that Spolster is going to be better at making adjustments. He can fire his team up. Missoula's is kind of like this soft-spoken guy. I don't respect. I feel like if they still had Idoka, uh, the Celtics would be blown through these series that's just my opinion though but i just don't i'm not a real respect uh i don't have a ton of respect for missoula yet he has to earn obviously he's the first year head coach he's younger than half the team seems like uh he's younger than half the team man so i don't think the, the uh, first the third quarter was anomaly but um i do like the first half a lot better it was a lot what uh brandon was saying as well and, and the last thing i have to say is complacency versus must win right uh heat coming in here they already know that they stole one you can go back to the house and you could potentially be up three one this is a punt type of situation here i expect the Celtics to come out early and often and get this one done and you can't you as a bookmaker they can't adequately account for that right like they bumped this a point off of the closing game close close for game one right like this is up to nine okay there's a nine and a half i think from a second in the market last night they can't they cannot account for like if the heat are just like yeah no we're good we'll we'll see you back in on south beach you that's worth like 10 points like effort is worth a ton in the nba right motivation we talk about this all the time on the show the motivation is such a huge factor you can't quantify it that sounds like a cliche you can't quantify effort but the bigger thing is that from a bookmaker perspective you literally can't put that into the power rating accurately there's no way to like they're going to be at 30 percent effort versus 70 like you can't do it so if we have like a highly motivated celtics team and a very low motivated boston team there's no way to quantify that which gives us value even on an exaggerated juice line that's kind of where like i get into this I will say, Jay and Sean, to your point, um, before I do the the cap on the total, and Brandon, I want your thoughts on this as well. We're not going to have a show before game three. Jay, if we're right and Boston wins game two, I am hammering Miami game three. Like I am 
lighting it up on Miami game three. I know that you're going to be like, well, I want to see game two, but as of right now, if this plays the script, would you agree that game three is a good Miami spot? Yeah, I could see Heat game three, Celtics game four. I could definitely see that scenario. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't wait to see the number. That's for sure. Yeah. So like Brandon, I mean, we talked about this in the season in the series preview. I wanted Miami game one, Miami up two one, and then I'm hitting Celtics. If we can hit the script, I need the the teams to play the script, obviously. <laughs> but if it's two one, Miami, Miami, as soon as the buzzer sounds and those numbers go up, I am hitting Boston heavy. They're gonna win the series. They're just gonna screw around in two of the first three. I think it goes seven because I think they probably lose another one, and like the margin there gets really tight. But I do like my, like Boston in the series if we can get this thing to go to script still. Yeah, I, I I agree. I want to agree. That's what all of my instincts say. But I do think that everything Sean said also makes a lot of sense here. That like, I think if these were different jerseys and maybe different coaches, to be fair, I think if if I watched the series last night, kind of blind, without the history of what I thought about these teams, I might come away being like, oh man, come on. Shooting outlier, the Heat hit a billion shots. The Celtics were way better. As Joe Mazzula said, they won three of the four quarters. I might come away being like, how about Celtics in five, guys? That price is probably a little too short here, especially because, look, what do we say in the series preview? Boston's way better. They should blow them off the court. And then what happened? All the things we said happened. The problem is all the things we said happened. The Heat are the Heat, and the Celtics are the Celtics. And, like, all the analysis is true. It happened for three quarters. All the analysis also just said the fourth quarter is part of the analysis or the third quarter in this case. But I, I think we have to account for both sides. I don't know that we should look at this and be like, all right, we're going long. It's going to definitely go that way. It could, it could just be Boston wins the next four. I don't think that would really stun anyone. They're a much better team. I don't honestly think Matt that I'm confident the Celtics win this series. I'd put it close to a coin flip right now, to be totally honest. I think there's still value on Miami. So I, I don't want to be too certain of anything just because confirmation bias of we saw what we wanted in game one, but we did see a lot of what we wanted in game one. There's so, no question about that. Look, 842, it's 3936 Miami. 842 second quarter. Okay. Um, then they got rolled out after that, though, in that quarter. Yeah. So, like, but this is kind of the thing, though, is like the Heat actually led. The, the, my problem here, Sean, is like the idea of they dominated. We're basing this off of the quarter splits and not the game flow. Because the game flow actually says like Miami was like right there or slightly ahead, get killed for a small stretch in the second, destroy them in the third, played even. Like Boston didn't dominate. Like they didn't make stage some sort of crazy comeback like the Lakers in game four or in game one, right? It was 25-20 Boston uh, versus Miami in that fourth, you know? And like, obviously Boston's, those, there's some garbage time in there. So I actually go the other way, Brandon, where, you know, you, you mentioned like the, Sean's talking about like, well, I saw that one quarter. Sean, that is exactly what I said on this podcast in the bubble three years ago was like, Look, the Celtics, they just lost one quarter. If they just stop losing these stupid... Mm, this is what they do. I went back and found it last night. Game two, this exact same thing happened. Like, this is the script for Miami, is lose three quarters, destroy them in one, and then force this to seven and potentially win. Like, Brandon, I go the other way. I'd like Miami more to win this thing because Boston is continues to show that they are more and more vulnerable. Like we started off being like, well, yeah, okay. Like Boston's really good. They should, they should win the title in the round in, in round one. They lose twice to the Hawks. We're like, okay. But they go against the Sixers. We're like, they got past that. There's no Embiid. They're going to win this. That goes seven. Right. And now we're here versus Miami. Honestly, I would feel better if this was any other team though. Like if Boston's facing Milwaukee, I'd be like, yeah, Boston's going to win, but they're not. They're facing this heat team. That absolutely has the script. Um, I need to give the cap on on the total. So I was on the over in game one. These two defenses are not the same as they used to be. I will be back on probably on an over in game three. However, a uh, couple of numbers to keep in mind here. The Celtics shot over 50% from three in the playoffs. When a team shoots over 50% from three in the previous game, okay, 
uh, they, the under in the following game has been sensational at, or at least solid, not sensational. It's been really good at 53 points. No, 55.3%, 120, 97 and 11. So 55% of the time it goes under the, uh, team total goes under 55% of the time as well. So 55% of 55% of, of the time, the like basically what this says is Miami's probably going to regress. The other one to keep in mind here is that Miami actually, uh, when they, after they score really, really well, after they have these like phenomenal scoring performances, they have tended to go over at over 55% or go under at, at over 55%. So I'm not, I don't like betting like instant regression, Miami is a team that, for lack of a better analogy, it uses up all the ammo. It empties the clip in one game, and then the next game it's back to like, yeah, we can't run offense. Our offense is horrible. And then the next game it's like, we're hitting everything! And then the next game it's like, no, it's a struggle. So like, if they win this game, if you like Miami, I think you can like Miami in the under. That's fine too. But there's no scenario in which I like Miami in the over again. Like not in this spot, not in this game in particular. So I like the under in this game. It's it's over adjusted to 215 and a half. It's a huge adjustment from game one. I have the series model based off of playoff numbers still over this total. I think this particular game is a good spot to go under. So I'm going to get cute. I'm going to play the under 215 and a half. Uh, all right. So Jay likes first half. Sean likes first. Half. Jay, I want to get this on record. Sean, you like first half and, and full game? Or just first half. Yeah, I like. I would take uh, on officially on the card. It's gonna be Celtics minus nine, and then the team total okay. over one twelve and a half. But yeah, I, I I think they take care of business in the first half as well. Sean likes the over one twelve and a half on team total. Uh, Brandon first half and full game. And Brandon, I mean, you've given it a hundred times. Do you do you want to give the vase hands cap again? <laughs> Yeah, just real quick. Jalen Brown over two and a half turnovers. Listen to the 700 other episodes we've told you to take it. He had six turnovers game one. He's 3.4 for the playoffs. He's over this 10 of 14 games. That's it. Take take it before they move the line because, my God, Jalen Brown, stop giving it to the other team. You're ruining this for us. We want the two and a half. Stop ruining it. I'm probably not going to play the Tatum one this game. He only had a one until that late, like two-minute stretch when he had three. Horford series rebounds. This, Matt, you said we swept game one. We didn't. I missed the Horford over six and a half by the hook. He got six rebounds. He did have 10 rebounding chances, which was second highest in the game. So I'm not totally going away from this. Jalen Brown had nine rebounds on 12 chances. He's the, he's the leader right now. That's not a fear to me. He's not going to be a guy that, that holds up over the series. So Horford basically is in the mix as much as anything. You tweeted, Matt, about Robert Williams. This does not look like a Rob Williams series. He was rough defensively. I think you had 157 offensive rating for Miami or something close to that number. So I'm going to go back to the Horford well, 80 to 1 rebounding leader. I'll probably skip the over six and a half this game just to wait and see. But 80 to 1 is far too long for a guy that, to me, trends as the big guy for Boston the longer the series goes. And again, average 10 rebounds a game against them last year. So you can listen to more about those caps on past pods, but same thing. Um, I'm going to be on Robert Williams unders because I do think that they're probably going to have to just go to guards. They're going to have to play small. Like Miami is not a big team. You're not getting out muscled, right? Your other thing on your Horford thing, I would tell you on the, the I would probably go back on Horford on the rebounds again. Um, not only did you get hit with the hook, think about how well Miami shot, right? Like, you make right. more shots, you're gonna you're not gonna have as many rebounds. So <laughs> yeah, when I when I looked up the rebounding opportunities, I sorted on NBA.com by just conference finals. And I had to look past like six dudes from the Western Conference before I could find anybody from this game. I mean, Jalen Brown, 12 rebounding chances is the is the game leader. 12 rebounding chances. chances. Like we got Jokic had like seven thousand rebounds in the first quarter the other night. He had he literally had 10 rebounds in one quarter. Jalen Brown has 12 chances to lead for the game here. So I do think that the number is right there uh, uh, for the over six and a half and the 80 to one is too long. All right. It's going to do it for buckets. You can follow Sean on Twitter at Sean. I'm sorry, at Chicago flow. MSU networks. You can follow Brandon on Twitter at Wheaton Brando. Jay's on Twitter at J money is money catches YouTube show as well. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow with the best bets episode for nuggets Lakers game three in LA. No show on Saturday, but we will be back on Sunday night 
with setting you up for the Monday games as well. Hope you have, have yourselves a great weekend. Good luck with your bets. Uh, thanks to David Payne, our producer. We'll see you guys again next time. Until then, let's get buckets.